Hello, this is Jackson Hasty, and I'm going to be discussing this work, the illustration of the arrival of the emperor at Shinbasi Station following a victory by Kobayashi Kiyochika, and the transition from the Edo to the Meiji periods in Japan, as represented in art. This painting is an ukiyo-e painting, which means that it was sketched by the artist initially, and then carved onto a block of wood so that it could be reprinted and sold widely. This is an immensely popular style of art during the late Edo period, particularly at the turn of the 19th century. This specific print, though, was made later, in 1895, immediately following the Sino-Japanese War. As far as the style goes, here's a familiar example from the late Edo period, produced around 1830 to 1832, the Great Wave off Kanagawa. It is part of a series called 36 Views of Mount Fuji, which is one of the most famous sets of these woodblock paintings. You can see Mount Fuji here, as you can in all of the series, all of the paintings in the series. The mountain is kind of a central location for art because you can see it from much of central Honshu, the largest island in Japan. And as the name suggests, the series takes 36 views of the mountain from around the Edo, modern day Tokyo area many of which focus on other things in the landscape. Here is Fine Wind, Clear Morning, a closer view of Mount Fuji that focuses on the mountain itself, as well as the sky and clouds surrounding it as it fades into the foothills. And here is Under Manon Bridge at Fukugawa, which takes a slice of life from the area around the bridge. Most of these prints focus on the landscape, both the natural area and the town and people, here you can see people fishing, as well as people walking over the bridge carrying their umbrellas. The painting is divided both vertically and horizontally into thirds. And in the middle third, you can see the bridge with the sky and the water below it, which means that the bridge appears to be the focus of this painting. This will become important later. Some of the paintings are portraits but the focus is usually on what they're doing and not who they are. And the things depicted are normally things like entertainment, leisure, or agriculture, as you saw in the last, last slide. Here on the left, there's a scene from a very famous play. And on the right, this is a depiction of three geisha performers. Let's step back for a second. In 1868, the system of governance fell apart. The shogunate, a military dictatorship that had ruled the country for 700 years, was overthrown, and the emperor was reinstated in the Meiji Restoration. Since the 17th century, in and out migration from the country had been strictly prohibited, and foreign trade had only been conducted through a few select locations. But, following the Meiji Restoration, Japan underwent a period of rapid industrialization, and Western styles, concepts, and ideas became more prominent in Japan at this time as both trade and immigration with the United States and Europe opened. Japan also began a series of outward military exploits after a long period of isolationism, getting into wars with both Russia and China and colonizing parts of Korea, China, and Southeast Asia. Additionally, the emperor became central to the image of the state and to Japanese national identity. The artist of the subject painting Kobayashi Kiyochika was born at the end of the Edo period, about 20 years before these changes occurred. And he began producing these woodblock prints right after the Meiji government was established. At this point, ukiyo-e paintings were going out of style, particularly as rapid development shifted the nation's focus away from nature. Now, look at the painting again, and the changes stand out especially compared to the 36 views of Mount Fuji. Immediately, the difference in subject can be observed. The focus of this painting isn't a natural feature or an activity. It's the emperor. You can see him here in the center, surrounded by other military officers. Notably, the emperor and the other officers have very dark clothing, and they, are, they have the darkest colors in this entire painting which means that the eye will be immediately drawn to them. Let's also take a look at their garb. Not only is it focused on the military, but it appears very Western. 
This is the kind of outfit that Kaiser Wilhelm or Ulysses S. Grant might wear. It's fully outfitted with golden cufflinks, golden lacing, and plenty of medals, as well as the cross sash here. This represents the injection of Western styles into all aspects of life, including the military and the way that the state saw the military. Contrast the way that these men are dressed with the women who are looking on them, who have lighter colors and are not the focus of this painting. Additionally, all of the people on the left side are facing the emperor, further drawing the viewer to him. Rather than an important backdrop, the emperor is the absolute centerpiece of this work. He is the mountain or the wave of earlier works. Additionally, observe the way this painting is partitioned vertically with the sky composing the, the top third and the platform the bottom third. In the central third, immediately behind the group of military men is a large locomotive billowing with smoke and the rest of the station. Compare this to the bridge, which occupies the same space in the 36 views of Mount Fuji set. This train is the focus and it symbolizes the industrialization of the country. And it's not something that would have been seen in an earlier Edo period work. The smoke is also darkened at the source to draw attention against the light background. Furthermore, notice how many flags are in this painting. The flag was an emerging symbol of the empire, created early in the Meiji area as, as part of the nationalist movement. The recognizable red dot is supposed to represent the rising sun, which has been the name that Japan has called itself since the 700s AD. Some of these flags are seen on the military uniforms, and there are several in the background over a cityscape. On that note, it is important to see that the city here has become the backdrop of the scene, rather than Mount Fuji or another natural feature. This shows the importance of the urban growth and industry at this time, and it's notable for a few reasons. For one thing, it shows the interest of the customer, someone who will be buying this art, as tastes shift away from nature and towards depictions of the city or the state. It also demonstrates the changing self-image of the country. The 36 views of Mount Fuji depicts Japan in terms of its natural beauty and landscape, whereas here Japan is depicted in terms of its military success. Yet again, this represents the shifting national ethos in response to the Meiji Restoration. Finally, this painting shows the literal change happening in the city of Tokyo. The train station here is only about four kilometers away from the Manon Bridge, depicted in an earlier painting shown. Yet, in that one, all you can see in the background are trees and the mountain, whereas here you can see a bustling cityscape with smoke billowing, and flags and very tall, well-established buildings. In the 60 years between the publishing of both works, the change in the landscape of Tokyo could not be more pronounced. The setting of this painting is notable too because it follows an event. The previous set looked at places or activities that could have been taken at almost any point in time, but this painting shows the emperor returning from a specific military victory an event that altered the country as it developed into a fully-fledged empire. In that sense, more than anything, this painting represents change. Thank you, and here are the references.